Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding. Topic number six, lecture discussion. The welding characteristics of carbon steel. Objective, to develop a general understanding of the various types of steels with regard to carbon content, weldability, and common welding difficulties. Steel is a mixture of iron and carbon, along with other alloying elements. Some of these other alloying elements, which can be added to steel, include manganese, chromium, nickel, silicone, molybdenum, and so forth. However, carbon has the greatest effect on the weldability of steels, and so we will restrict our discussion to the effects of adding various amounts of carbon to steels. Carbon steels are normally divided into three categories, low carbon, medium carbon, and high carbon. Low carbon steels have a carbon content up to about 29 hundredths percent, or about three parts of carbon in a thousand. These steels are the lowest in strength and have good ductility. Low carbon steels are easily welded without the need of preheat or postheat to prevent crack formation. However, preheating or stress relieving are sometimes required on thick sections or when the joint is highly restrained. Steels with higher carbon in the 30 hundredths to 59 hundredths percent range are called medium carbon steels. These steels have carbon from about three to six parts per thousand. These steels have greater strength and lower ductility. However, these steels have poorer weldability due to the higher carbon content. Because of the rapid cooling associated with welding, the medium carbon steels tend to become brittle both in the weld itself and in the heat affected zone. To reduce this effect, heat is sometimes applied to a workpiece before welding. This preheating is commonly used to reduce the cooling rate and minimize formation of brittle zones. Post-weld heat treatments, such as normalizing or annealing, can also restore ductility to a weld produced on medium carbon steel. This involves heating the weldment to a temperature in the area of 1600 degrees Fahrenheit and then cooling in still air for normalizing or cooling in a furnace for annealing. Generally, the processes of normalizing and annealing produce a steel that is lower in strength and more ductile. The high carbon steels have carbon contents in a range of from six tenths to a maximum of one percent. The additional amount of carbon in these steels further reduces the weldability. To prevent the formation of cracks in the weld, a higher preheat and post-weld heat treatments are required. High carbon steels are not normally welded on a commercial basis due to these welding problems. Iron with carbon in an amount above one and seven tenths percent is normally considered cast iron. This would be about 17 parts of carbon per thousand. Special procedures and electrodes are required in order to weld cast iron. Carbon steels are classified by the American Iron and Steel Institute using a four digit number. A typical classification would be 1020. The first two digits indicate the major alloying elements. For example, the 10 in 1020 is used to indicate plain carbon steel. The last two digits indicate the carbon content of the steel. A 10 in this position would indicate one part per thousand or one-tenth of one percent. Thirty indicates three parts per thousand, or 
three-tenths of one percent. Forty-five indicates four and a half parts per thousand, or 4.5 tenths of one percent. In the AISI numbering system, these plain carbon steels would be listed. 1006 to 1027, low carbon steel. 1030 to 1055, medium carbon steel. And 1060 to 1095, high carbon steel. Other classifications exist, such as ASTM, ASME, and SAE. Tables are available to cross-reference the AISI classifications to these other systems. Similarly, filler metals for welding carbon steel are identified with a classification system. The American Welding Society classifies filler metals by using a series of letters and numbers. A typical classification is ER70S5. The ER indicates an electrode or rod. The 70 indicates that the filler metal has a minimum tensile strength of 70,000 pounds per square inch after it is deposited. The S indicates that the filler metal is a solid electrode or rod. And the last number is a suffix, which indicates chemical composition. The selection of filler metals for the gas tungsten arc process is based on matching the strength and the chemical composition of the base metal. Welding of low carbon steels make up the greatest part of welding that is being done. It is the usual standard of comparison for weldability. By using the proper materials, a sound weld deposit will have a greater strength than the surrounding base metal. The quality of the weld depends on the quality of the materials used proper welding technique, proper machine settings, and the skill of the welder. A quality weld on mild steel should be free of undercut and overlap. It should contain no defects or porosity. Various weld problems can occur during welding which may cause the finished weld to be unacceptable. Consistent penetration can be a problem which can arise from either one or a combination of several factors. Excessive penetration can be caused by setting the welding current too high, the weld becomes wide and flat with too much root reinforcement. Excessive penetration can also result from traveling too slowly. Now this causes the bead to become overly wide with too much face and root reinforcement. Much more filler metal is consumed than is required. Setting the welding current too low can result in insufficient penetration. The bead becomes narrow and highly convex with little or no root reinforcement. Incomplete fusion along the toes of the weld is common. Traveling too fast may also produce this problem. Here the weld bead becomes small and irregular with little or no root reinforcement. Porosity is another problem which may occur when welding carbon steels with a gas tungsten arc process. Porosity is gas pockets which become entrapped within the weld or appear on its surface. Porosity often occurs from improper gas shielding of the molten weld pool. This can happen in the form of low gas flow rate, using impure gas, or even using the wrong shielding gas. Besides shielding problems, this defect can also result from an excessive amperage level, excessively fast travel speed, or welding with contaminated base metals. Tungsten inclusions are small particles of tungsten that sometimes become trapped in the weld deposit. The major cause of this defect is touching the tungsten electrode against the molten puddle during welding. This is also caused by too much amperage or setting the high frequency setting too high. 
The tungsten electrode should be cleaned if it becomes contaminated by base metals or by the filler metal. Improper torch angles can result in defects such as an improper profile and poor appearance. If the arc is directed too much towards one of the plates forming the workpiece, an unequal leg fillet weld will result. Improper travel angle can produce a poor appearance. This results from directing too much of the heat towards the filler metal rod. This makes welding especially difficult as the filler metal tends to melt back and cause inconsistent addition of the filler. Cracks in the weld crater are caused by depressions left at the end of a weld bead. This problem can be solved by depositing additional filler metal at the end of the weld bead to fill this depression caused by welding. Of all the steel being produced, the greatest tonnage is in mild steel. Therefore, you can expect to be working with it in the majority of welding situations.